When we think of endangered animals, the first thing that comes to mind for most of us are rhinos in Africa, jaguars in South America, or even orangutans in Indonesia. However, a lot of our wildlife here in the UK is under threat too. In this video, I'll be talking about just one of Britain's many threatened species, the natterjack toad, and what you can do to help it. Before I get started, here are the timestamps for this video which are also in the description below, so that you can skip to the parts that you're most interested in. Now, a lot of people may think that toads aren't very interesting. However, just like any animal, if you know enough about it, you should always be able to appreciate its place in nature. With that in mind, let's start with some facts about the natterjack toad. 1. Some facts about the natterjack toad. Natterjacks emerge from hibernation in March, usually after common frogs and toads, and head towards their breeding sites. Natterjack toads breed in warm, shallow water and, being most active at night, they tend to feed on invertebrates like moths and woodlice. One of only two species of toad in the UK, the other being the larger common toad, the natterjacks can be heard over a range of up to two kilometres. The males inflate their vocal sacs to make loud calls in the breeding season. These calls are important because the natterjacks are often present in low numbers, so it's key that the males and females can find each other. Natterjack tadpoles, or toad poles as we like to call them here at home, are the smallest of all European tadpoles, despite developing into the loudest European amphibians. Depending on the environmental temperature, metamorphosis from tadpole to toad can take anywhere between 5 and 16 weeks, so don't hold your breath if you're waiting to see the new generation. One particularly cool fact is that the natterjack toads can darken or lighten the colour of their skin in order to camouflage themselves in their environment. If anyone knows what this process is called, then please do let me know in the comments as I'd be interested to find out. Just like common toads, natterjacks will adopt a defensive posture if threatened, raising themselves up and inflating their lungs to appear larger. They also have poisonous skin to deter predators, however, more intelligent predators like seagulls and crows have learned to remove the skin, so making them more edible. 2. How to identify them, and tell them apart from common toads. Natterjack toads have shorter legs than common toads, and as a result they tend to run instead of walking or hopping, giving them the alternative name of running toads. Adults can grow up to 8cm in length, with green, brown or cream coloured skin. They're particularly more olive green in colour than the common toad. Their backs are also covered with dark warts, often with yellow or red tips. The key feature that can be used to identify natterjacks it's a clear yellow stripe along their back, which common toads don't have. Thanks to this characteristic, they were famously described by Chris Packham as the Lamborghini of the amphibian world. Natterjacks can also be differentiated from common toads by their green iris that surrounds an oval, horizontal black pupil, quite different to the bright orange iris of the common toad. Whilst their long, jelly-like springs of spawn are similar to those of the common toad, natterjack eggs are laid in single rather than double rows. Lastly, natterjack tadpoles are slightly smaller than common toad tadpoles, and they have a grey spot on the throat. The yellow stripe becomes obvious as the tadpoles start growing legs. Whilst the females are larger than the males, both have an average lifespan of around 10 to 15 years. Hopefully now you'll be able to clearly spot a natterjack toad, but this will only happen if you look in the right places. 3. Where to find them Natterjack toads are currently known to exist in about 60 locations across the UK. Good places to see them are coastal areas such as Southport in Lancashire and the sand dunes on the Merseyside and Cumbrian coasts, as well as on the Scottish Solway and in South West Ireland. The natterjack used to be common on the Surrey and Hampshire heaths and also around the coast of East Anglia. Sadly, only one or two colonies now remain. But why? 4. Why they're under threat Despite having strict protection under British and European law, and reintroductions to support the Hampshire and Surrey populations, natterjack toads are still considered endangered, even with the females being able to lay up to 7,500 eggs during the breeding season, which is between April and July. This is mainly due to habitat loss, however, 
Global warming also contributes by causing rising sea levels, which flood the homes of the Natajap toads. Also, global warming means that less rain will fall. Freshwater pools will therefore dry up faster, and many tadpoles may die before they grow into adult toads. Fertilizers can also pollute fresh water and kill tadpoles and toads, as can the hooves of cattle as they drink from fresh water. So, yes, there are a lot of threats to Natajap toads, and yes, they are endangered, but that doesn't mean that there's nothing we can do to help them. 5. Why you should help them Now, to be honest, most of the reasons for why we should protect Natajaks also apply to why we should protect any species. For example, the importance of conserving biodiversity, or the role that each species plays in its ecosystem, or just the fact that Natajaks are protected by law. I've already made a video explaining why conservation matters to you, which you can watch here. But also stay tuned for my next video, where I'll be discussing why we should protect any species, endangered or not, in a more general but still highly important context. That said, let me know in the comments why conserving Natajaks is important to you, so that other people might be encouraged to take action. For example, although conservation shouldn't just be about what people want for themselves, I think that Natajaks are incredible, and they make an incredible sound. So for me, it would be tragic to lose them in that respect. 6. How you can help them Firstly, if you see a Natajak toad on land, don't pick it up and put it in the water, as some people may do in an attempt to help them. This actually makes things harder for Natajaks, as because of their short legs, they're poor swimmers, and have been known to drown quickly in deep water if they can't get ashore. You also need a license to handle Natajak toads, so picking them up is a bad idea altogether. Natajaks have full legal protection under UK law, making it an offence to kill, injure, capture, disturb or sell them, or to damage or destroy their habitats. This applies to all life stages. However, unfortunately, people who camp or drive on sand dunes can unintentionally kill Natajak toads. So be careful if you ever plan on visiting somewhere that Natajaks might live. If you live in a coastal area that you think Natajaks would do well in, then try digging shallow pools, which would provide the toads with a perfect breeding habitat. You could even get involved by taking part in monitoring Natajak toads for amphibian and reptile conservation that we have here in the UK. I'll leave a link in the description for anyone who's interested in how you can do this. Finally, spread the word about Natajaks being endangered. Share what you've learned from this video, or just share this video with your family and friends, and help to raise awareness about what people can do to help Natajak conservation. Have a look at the organisations that are working to help these toads out, such as amphibian and reptile conservation that I mentioned before, and get in contact with them to find out what else you can do to make a difference. I'll leave some more links in the description for some of these fantastic organisations. If you've enjoyed this video, and you're interested in how you can help other animal species near you, then make sure you hit the like button and subscribe to this channel for more videos.